Thank you all for joining us this morning, this very cold and icy morning, um, to discuss the very important issue of cardiovascular disease and heart health. We are here to kick off American Heart Month and specifically to educate women about the risk factors of heart disease. Our mayor, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, cares deeply about this issue and has made it one of the central issues in her health policy agenda, Health Healthy Baltimore 2015 for the city. And she is one of our biggest advocates in ensuring that we pay attention to the leading causes of disease, disability, and death for the people of Baltimore City. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Dr. Barbeau, thank you for the kind introduction. And yes, we are partners in our effort to make Baltimore healthy and we try to lead by example. We even had a dance off for the holidays, we got our blood pumping. I think that the tape will reveal who won and the score. Anyway, it was lots of fun and I think it's, I always think it's a great way. It's more, the more that you can do uh, while you're having fun to, to get your heart rate up, uh, the easier it is as you try to make uh, being uh, having a healthy lifestyle stick for life. So I'm grateful that everyone has come out this morning to support improving heart health for our residents. I'm pleased to be joined again by Ms. Yvette Mungo from the American Heart Association and uh, Dr. Sharon Winokur from St. Agnes. Thank you both for being here. Uh, I also uh, want to, to recognize the fact that these women and the organizations they represent have been have had long-standing uh, relationships. They've been great partners in our effort to improve the heart health of Baltimore City residents. Also joining us, uh, you will hear from uh, Nicole Puglis. Did I get it right? Really? Yes. And Ms. Russo and Anella and Yella. Russo, who will share uh, their stories, even though I, it, by looking at both of you, it is hard to believe that you have any testimony to give about um, you know, suffering uh, from a heart ailment, but I'm very eager to hear your stories because I think you, know, you and the others that we're gonna hear from put the, uh, a face on women's heart health in a way that uh, we need to see, you know, because far too often, you know, it's, I think women uh, suffer uh, in secret and in silence, and we don't uh, know the faces of uh, heart disease in, um, in our country. So I'm looking forward to hearing from both of you. Along with Ms. Doris, who has been here on several occasions, uh, Ms. Uh, Doris uh, Brightful, a heart health activist and co coordinator in the 10th an annual Red Dress Sunday event, and we all have our red dress pins on to remind us. So the challenge of improving heart health is one that takes all of us. No organization uh, as energetic as Ms. Doris is, you can't do it alone. We have to work in partnership. So this month, with the help of our partners, we have an opportunity to renew our commitment to ending the burden of heart disease in Baltimore. In our city, there are too many people dying prematurely from heart disease. Heart disease is preventable. And through co a coordinated effort and education, I know that we can prevent it. That's why we are encouraging everyone to go red in observance of Heart Awareness Month. Cardiovascular disease is by far the biggest killer of women in our country. 64% of the women with sudden cardiac death had no previous symptoms. That's compared to 50% of the men. One of the most important ways women can avoid heart disease is by paying attention to what they eat and how much physical activity you get. And everybody knows, these, we, we know it's preventable, we know it sounds easy, but it's, we also understand it's not. It takes all of us working together and looking for creative ways such as having the dance off or doing Zumba or taking the steps. I wear, as, as I mentioned last year, I'm sure I wear a pedometer and I'm in competition uh, with a ton of people to, on, on my steps. Maybe that's our next competition. Do you have one? I do. Not the Fitbit though. You have, how come we're not? <laughs> do we have this conversation? <laughs> 
she knows I'm always looking for other people to compete with. I even got my daughter one, so we're we're competing too. And you know I'm I don't I don't cut her any slack. Um, but anyway, so now that is our next competition. Um, but by all, it's competition, but it's also fun, and it's a way for me every day to be reminded to keep moving, keep moving. Sometimes if it's just, I just stand up and just do this, you know, because you just have to keep, you know, keep yourself moving. You don't want to get uh, used to a sedentary lifestyle because, oh boy, it's comfortable. It is comfortable, but it's also deadly. So that's something that we all have to work on. So not everyone has access to healthy foods, but I am committed to doing everything possible to increase opportunities for all of our citizens to have uh, better access to healthy foods. Our award-winning virtual supermarket <coughs> program will be up and back up and running soon. My food policy office coordinates efforts to increase access to healthy foods in our food deserts. And our commitment extends to the city's buildings as well with healthier food and snack options are now in some of our vending machines. I'm excited about that. One of our healthy vending machines is right down the hall. Through our cross-agency health task force, city agencies are actively planning ways to increase the number of outdoor venues in Baltimore to promote physical activities and to get our residents moving. I urge another thing that we can do is to urge all people, all smokers, to quit. It's not too late to make this New Year's resolution. Call the quit line today. That's 1-800-QUIT now. It's a big deal uh, and it would significantly improve your heart health uh, if you committed to making 2014 smoke free. Today we are reminded that change starts with everyday choices that we make. We can model the healthy living that we want to encourage for those around us and make this a healthy Baltimore. So I want to thank our partners, St. Agnes Hospital and the American uh, Heart Association Mid-Atlantic Chapter for hosting activities throughout the month. So as I encourage my friends, see a doctor or prevent a, or attend a free screening at one of the many events that are taking place this month. You have to know your numbers, your blood pressure, cholesterol, and glucose, and start making the lifestyle changes to turn them around. And finally, I want to encourage all residents to join me in uh, and wear red in February, especially next Friday, February the 7th, when we celebrate National Red Wear, Red, ah, National Wear Red Day. Okay, to increase awareness about heart disease among women. And on Sunday, February the 10th, in observance of the 10th annual Red Dress Sunday, a citywide initiative at more than 130 churches, Ms. Dora, so that's good work we, we're doing. Then the focus is to educate minority women about this number one killer, and that, that is made possible by St. Agnes. So I'm, I'm very pleased about that as well. You know, we can make a difference when it comes to women's health and Baltimore's health overall, but we're only going to make a difference if, uh, if we decide that we're going to commit to working together uh, to make Baltimore one of the nation's most healthy cities, and I think we can do it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Barbeau. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think it's evident by um, her off-script remarks how dedicated the mayor is to this area and to this issue. Um, and it really is such a pleasure to be her health commissioner because not only does she get it, she talks the talk, she walks the walk, and she is committed to ensuring that we have a healthier city. And so thank you once again. Um, and it bears repeating that heart disease remains the number one overall killer in Baltimore City. And it's responsible for 30% of the deaths of women in Baltimore City. And unfortunately, you know, there are probably very few of us in this room who are, have not been affected by deaths due to heart disease, either in our personal families or in our work families. I know that for us in the health department, we recently had a staff member, a woman who died three days before Christmas from a heart attack. And I want that to become a rare event, but we all know that it's unfortunately all too common. Heart disease is also responsible for 15% of all premature deaths in the city. 
And simply put, heart disease is killing way too many people, way too many women, and we want to put a stop to that. Mayor talked about the risk factors of this um, killer, smoking, obesity, uncontrolled, high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, they're all risk factors that we can do something about. And while heart disease strikes women regardless of race or ethnicity, it is the number one killer of African American and Latina women in Baltimore and nationwide with more deaths each year than breast cancer, strokes, and lung cancer combined. That's a lot. And that's why with the mayor's office and the health department, we have placed improving heart health at the center of our city's health agenda. One of the goals in Healthy Baltimore is to decrease the rate of premature deaths due to cardiovascular disease by 10% by 2015. Now that's a really ambitious goal. I'm happy to report that we are making progress in this area. For African American residents, premature deaths due to cardiovascular disease declined from 2009 to 2011 by 9.9%. Can I see some thumbs up out there? All right. Additionally, there was a 36% reduction in the disparity in the rates of premature heart death between African American and white residents between 2009 and 2011. That's also one of our priorities is reducing the disparities based on race and ethnicity. So these are early gains and we can't yet claim victory because two years worth of data does not a trend make, but it's the right direction. And it reminds us that yes, indeed, we can turn the tide on heart disease through education, outreach, and making simple changes towards a healthier lifestyle. And so we've made, as the mayor mentioned, nutrition and physical activity signatures of the work that we are doing. And these are goals that have very simple beginnings. And so the most important thing is to set a goal, be realistic about that goal, and then get buddies to support you. And so it's actually maybe easier than you think. Think about replacing your 12 ounce can of soda with water every day. It saves 51,100 calories per year or a loss of 15 pounds. Reducing your salt intake can significantly improve your blood pressure. And think about increasing the amount of exercise you get. Consider taking a 30 minute walk during lunch. We at the health department sponsor walking Wednesdays. It's very easy to do. And as the mayor emphasized, stop smoking. It's the fastest way to improve your heart health. Just one year after you quit smoking, your risk of heart disease is cut in half. So there are very simple things that we can do every day to improve our health and the health of the women in our lives, either through our families or through our work families and our communities. Throughout the month, we will be working with partners like the American Heart Association, St. Agnes Hospital, to encourage city residents to make healthier food choices, exercise more often, quit smoking, schedule regular blood pressure and cholesterol screenings. The American Heart Association is the force behind National Wear Red Day, which unites women and men across the country in a national movement to give women a personal an urgent wake up call about their risks of heart disease. And to tell you a little bit more about National Wear Red Day, I am pleased to introduce Yvette Mingo, Executive Director, Vice President of Corporate Relations for the American Heart Association Mid-Atlantic Affiliate, Yvette. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Lord, for inviting us to this very vital conversation. You know, vanity wants me to take off my glasses, but good sense tells me to keep them on. Before I get started, I just wanted to say, that because we are excited, but I want to thank you for um, walking the talk. Mayor, I want to thank you for being so committed to the heart health and wellness of the residents, and in particular, your conversation around women. 
So we've heard a lot of startling statistics and some great improvements. Um, so I won't, I'll, I was taking them out of my comments to save time, but we've heard a lot of important facts. So from the American Heart Association cause campaign for women around heart and heart health is the Go Red for Women campaign and the National Wear Red Day. And I'm excited to be here to talk about the fact that we're celebrating our 10th anniversary of Go Red. And in these 10 years of Go Red, we have had women join the fight for their own heart health to save their lives. Fighting individually and together, we have had some great results. In these 10 years, over 627,000 women's lives have been saved, and we do celebrate that. And we celebrate what has happened here in Baltimore. We really do. But we also want to remember that the fight is far from over. Heart disease is still the number one killer of all women. So in 2004, when the AHA launched the Go Red for Women campaign, I'm excited to tell you that a million and a half women almost have joined the cause. And why is that exciting? Nine out of 10 people who joined the cause have actually begun to take some actions to improve their health. And as the mayor said, it's, it could be small actions. Walk a little, get com competition with your friend going, make healthy choices. That's what the campaign and the cause is about. I want to say thank you to Molly Shattuck, our Go Red for Women Baltimore Mission Engagement Chair, because she knows and espouses the importance of raising the awareness and that it is tantamount to saving lives. Molly, we thank you for supporting us, supporting the campaign, and always encouraging all people to be focused on their heart health. And Go Red isn't just about individual women. It really is about us banding together to make it our mission to fight heart disease. And why does it matter? Dr. Barbo said, it's the leading cause of death of all women, and significantly more in minority communities. One in three of us who dies, dies from heart disease nationally. But it's also almost 80% preventable. And so we know by sharing and teaching the truth and raising awareness, we really are saving lives from making these changes. So first, I want to thank the mayor for, I was going to encourage everyone to lead by example, but mayor, you've already talked about it, so thank you. The first thing we want to do is lead by example in our own lives, make healthy choices, exercise, make a diet change. Secondly, tell five women. Spread the word. Tell five women that you care about them, you want them to live longer, healthier lives, and urge them to get involved and go red. Now, you all talked about the National Wear Red Day on February 7th, and we're very excited about that national campaign. It is crucial. We are raising the awareness, and through that awareness, we are saving lives. We can stop this number one killer together just by talking and sharing. Locally, we're pretty excited too. So we've got lots of iconic businesses and buildings that are actually going red and involved in Go Red, like Care First, like Coldwell Banker. We have the Marriott Waterfront going red. We have the World Trade Center going red, Harbor Gallery, and yes, Oriole Park at Camden Yards is going red this year. So we're pretty excited. We have over 50 hospitals in the state of Maryland going red, news anchors, legislators, and hopefully, yes, our mayor will be in red again that day too, going red. We also urge everyone to join us as we go red on February 7th and to join our national sponsor, Macy's, who is going red across the nation in all the stores. We also have an invitation for you for February 8th at Towson Town Mall. It's our seventh annual Wear Red, Go Red Health and Fashion Fair event from 11 a.m. to 1.30. Come on out and have some fun. The mayor said exercise can be fun. Come out and have some fun. We're going to have blood, uh, blood pressure screenings and other health assessment tests. There will be hands-only CPR training this year. We're going to have fitness. There will be Zumba and, of course, a kid zone. As you learn, you'll have some fun, and you'll be entertained by the dazzling fashions modeled by the KISS Agency. Again, that's February 8th, Towson Town Center Mall, 11 to 1.30 p.m. Lastly, I'd like to say thank you and urge everyone to please join the Go Red for Women movement. Be with us on the 7th, be with us for the weekend, and visit baltimoremdgoredluncheon.heart.org. Thank you, Mayor. And um, I'd now like to call up.
Dr. Shannon Whitaker. She is the medical director of the Women's Heart Center at St. Agnes Hospital. Thank you, Dr. Barbo, and thank you, Mayor, for your continuing commitment to this cause and to uh, kicking off Heart Month every year with uh, such powerful words and a powerful example. Um, I'm Shannon Winokur, and I'm the medical director of the Women's Heart Center, as Dr. Barbeau mentioned, at St. Agnes Hospital. I'm very proud of that. Um, it's hard to put into perspective the staggering impact of heart disease. You've heard a lot of facts and figures today, but one that always jumps out at me is that one woman dies every minute from cardiovascular disease in this country. One woman every minute. It's just amazing. And up to half of them don't even know they're in danger. Cardiovascular disease is the single biggest health threat that all women face, as we've heard, but yet awareness is nowhere near, near where it needs to be in this community or across the United States, and our team is committed to changing that. As part of that effort, um, we're having our own 10th anniversary this year as well, along with the Go Red effort. We're having our 10th anniversary of Red Dress Sunday, so that same weekend that um, Yvette mentioned. On the Sunday, February 9th, we're having our 10th annual Red Dress Sunday. Um, there will be more than 130 local churches participating in this. It started with three, and now it's 130, so we're proud of that as well. Um, the effort's designed to raise awareness about the devastating impact of heart disease, and most importantly, encourage our local citizens to make positive lifestyle choices and changes to keep their hearts healthy. So we encourage the congregants to wear red to their services on Sunday, um, and then we also, um, many of the churches have health fairs afterwards with screenings, um, to try to help women know more about their own health. And we're so appreciative of the, de the dedication of the churches, and you're going to hear more about it from Doris in a few minutes. Um, uh, they clearly understand that educating their members is a vital part of providing extremely valuable tools to help save lives within the community, and it helps us take our life-saving message to the masses in a very powerful uh, way. I mean, women, women um, work together by community. I mean, they, we really, community is so important to women, and so doing this through the churches, I think, makes a big impact, and we are so, so appreciative to the churches for doing that year after year. So I see patients every day in the office with varying issues and diagnoses, but there are a few key questions that we hear consistently from just about everyone, and I thought it might be helpful uh, for me to address answers to those frequently asked questions today. The chances are for most of my patients have the questions, and some of you may too. Um, one of them is, what are the risk factors? And we've already heard about some of that from um, the mayor and from Dr. Barbeau. Um, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, high cholesterol, and a family history of early heart disease. These are all the major risk factors. In particular, smoking is really important as a risk factor for women. It disproportionately affects women more than men. So if you quit smoking, it's, it's even more powerful um, for your health than it is for men. Um, and diabetes also disproportionately affects women as well. Um, what are the signs and symptoms I need to look for? So chest pain, chest discomfort is the main one, and even though we, we do know that women do present differently, if you have chest discomfort, it is something to pay attention to. Shortness of breath is a big one. Fatigue is a huge one for women, and it's hard because women are fatigued for so many different reasons, but you know, it, it, it is just have the heart on your list of things you need to get checked out when you're really fatigued. Um, uh, palpitations, nausea, these are, these are things that you need to look out for in, um, in terms of, of, of signs and symptoms. Another question, the third question, what can I do to prevent a heart attack from happening? Um, as Yvette mentioned, 80% um, of our risk is under our control, is preventable. We can prevent heart disease, um, basically we can cut the risk by 80% just by doing four things. Exercising regularly, maintaining a healthy weight, um, not smoking, and I'm blanking on the fourth one. <laughs> It'll come to me in a minute. Um, eating a healthy diet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and I and I really um, and I applaud the mayor for really making a huge commitment to making sure that neighborhoods have healthy food options because it's so frustrating to you know get into the office and talk to patients about. You need to eat healthy, but if, if there are no resources, how are they going to eat healthy? So I really I thank you again, uh, Mayor Rollins Blake, for that commitment. Additionally, there's a significant amount of information, resources, and tools available at your fingertips at our um, Red Dress website. If you haven't already uh, gone to the site, it's www.reddresssunday.com, and you can access more information about cardiovascular disease, and most important, cardiovascular health, as well as healthy recipes, exercise, 
fitness tips, and so much more. It's all there for the taking, and it's at no cost. So again, I want to thank you all for your time today. Uh, thank Mayor Stephanie rollins Blake for um, having me here today um, and for partnering with St. Agnes with Red Dress Sunday once again. Um, and um, let's, uh, let's keep up the fight. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Mrs. Doris Brightful, Honorary Chair, Red Dress Sunday. Good morning. And first I must say I give all honor to God for all the accomplishments and the vision that he has placed on my heart as a community activist in the fight against heart disease. I served as a nurse for the health department for 42 years, and in that time, I got to see for myself just how devastating the impact of heart disease is. Within our communities, that is why today, during my retirement years, I have made it a personal mission and priority to help my fellow neighbors, friends, and community learn about the, the disease. These risk factors and what they can do to prevent, to prevent it. I am an active member of Bethel AME Church here in the city and also at our second location in the county, which has opened a great door for our heart ministry to fulfill that mission. I serve as the coordinator for the church's Red Dress Sunday program each year working collaboratively with St. Agnes Hospital, our pastor, and our Doris Reith Health Ministry on a great event packed with resources to help our people learn, to motivate them, and to make their health a priority. Additionally, Bethel AME Church is a participant in the St. Agnes Heart to Heart Program, the Pre-Diabetic Program, and most recently, we're offering yoga classes to inspire not only our members, but the community to get active. It is important that people understand that the many resources are really at their fingertips. Serving as an ambassador for healthy living is so important to me. I'm here to encourage others be a resource for our family members, friends, and neighbors, and make it fun. Get a group of friends together for uh, morning walks several times a week, sign up for exercise classes, have health dinners together, and share the recipes that are nutritional and tasty. I would like to encourage that the pastors of every church in Baltimore participate in the Red Dress Sunday if you're not already active doing so. This tremendous program touches so many lives. In fact, <clears throat> February the 9th, 2014, more than 130 churches will participate Add Red Dress Sunday to your annual caliber of events. Show your congregation you share, you care. Excuse me, <clears throat> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> you care, and in return, it will save lives. Visit the RedDressSunday.com to find out how to get started. And again, I would like to thank you for inviting me, and thank you, Mayor. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Doris Brightful, for your continuing work, even in retirement, promoting public health and helping communities to improve their health. So thank you very much. Next, I would like to introduce Ms. Nicole Puglise, who will talk to us about her experience with heart disease. Good morning, everybody. Hello, my name is Nicole. I am 40 years old, and tomorrow will be exactly one month ago that I had my heart attack. 
Even though I am a registered nurse, I did not recognize the symptoms I was having that was related to the heart attack. Many people say that women's heart symptoms are different than men's. I was driving along with my nine-year-old daughter in the car. At first, I had a burning sensation in my chest. I thought I was getting an upper respiratory cold until the pain became much worse. I had nausea, dizziness, and then both of my arms went numb. 911 was called with a quick response from Catonsville EMS. I was quickly transported to St. Agnes Hospital where the ER doctors got me into the cardiac cath lab in five minutes and the stent was immediately placed. I was saved without any muscle damage to my heart because of their quick response. The care that I received there was outstanding. This event has significantly changed my life as it has forced me to make the changes in lifestyle, such as quitting smoking, medication compliance, healthier eating habits, and establishing a regular exercise routine. At St. Agnes Hospital, I am participating in the cardiac outpatient rehab program where they are providing me with the encouragement and skills to learn how to stay on the right path. This is a long-term process, but I take it one day at a time. And I'm happy to be able to share that experience with everyone. And even though my family has had um, a long-standing history of heart disease, early death, I didn't expect it to be at 40. So thank you for inviting me and allowing me to share my story. Thank you, Ms. Puglis, and that really powerful reminder that we never think it's going to be us. We never think it's going to be in this moment, but living that healthy lifestyle and doing the things that we need to do. So thank you, and we're so glad to have you with us today. Um, before I introduce our next speaker, I want to acknowledge Councilman Curran, who's joined us. Uh, Councilman Curran is the chair of the Health Committee and one of our biggest supporters at the Health Department. He's done a lot to promote uh, heart health here in the city, being really the main sponsor of um, the Indoor Smoking Cessation Act. So thank you, Councilman Curran, for joining us. Um, at this point, I would like to introduce Ms. Aniela Russo. My name is Aniela. I'm 42 years old. I moved to Baltimore a couple years ago. February of 2012, I was freelancing at a Go Red event at the Towson Mall. Um, numbness in my right hand, not feeling well, fatigue. Um, told my boss, she said, tough it out, you're strong. <laughs> um, but luckily because of that event and the brochure that I got from someone, I recognized that I had some symptoms. Uh, immediately made a doctor's appointment, got to the doctor. Um, right then and there, I was admitted. Um, immediately transferred to Hopkins, got to Hopkins and was told that my main artery and two others were completely clogged. There was no medical reason why I was able to survive that. I was told I had to have open heart surgery immediately. All my family's in California. I was by myself. Um, my kids were at school. I, I didn't know what I was going to do and I told the doctor that I couldn't get it done. He said, if you walk out of here, you're going to die. Um, I felt like I was alone, but I wasn't alone. I had the surgery, I had a community of neighbors to help, um, got through that surgery. Um, fast forward, symptoms weren't still there, numbness in my arms even after the surgery. Uh, I was honored by the American Heart Association to speak at Johns Hopkins University that was sponsored by different <coughs> companies and I wanna thank Coldwell Banker, Dean and Sean who sponsored that event also. Um, I gave a speech there and someone in the audience was inspired and came to me with a referral to another doctor because I was in the emergency so many times even after that heart surgery and they kept telling me there was nothing wrong. They said, no, you're fine. We already fixed your heart, you're good. There, there's nothing wrong. Um, fast forward a little bit, I went for a second opinion and I was thoroughly examined after several testing and they told me that my aorta was completely clogged. 
And if I had not gotten, and I got another bypass, if I had not gotten that second surgery, I wouldn't be standing here today with legs. Um, I've been told several times that they don't understand how I've made it through these two completely clogged arteries in my body, but I eat healthy, I do everything right. I have a gene that just won't let up. It's family history. And I wanna say, I've heard everyone talk about food and eating healthy, and I, I've done all those things, but I think with me coming here and to this new state, embracing a new environment, it was a lot of stress. Stress causes a lot of things in our body that we don't pay attention to. And we can do all of the above, but if we don't embrace the moment, live for today, take a deep breath, and not let the stress get the best of us, then we're still gonna have all these issues. So I just wanna thank again, the American Heart Association for having me. I wanna thank Cole Banker for being such great support during my last surgery. Um, and I think if I can come to this state and be embraced by Baltimore and the community that has embraced me and helped me through this, then if I can do that by myself, then together we can all penetrate the communities that need the help and need the awareness. And just once again, thank you for having me. Mrs. Russo, that was um, clearly very powerful for all of us and a clear reminder of um, the importance of not just the body but the soul and thank you for that very important reminder. Um, <clears throat> and I think it really brings it home for us once again that it's not just about taking care of ourselves, but it's about taking care of our communities. Um, so thank you. So um, with that, I wanna thank you all for joining us for this uh, event, this yearly event. Um, I've been doing it with the mayor for the last three years. And one of the things that I'm pleased about is that we have been able to start having some objective data that we're turning the tide as well as having yet again very powerful testimonials about why it is that today should be the first day of a better heart health for all of us and it's not just about today but it's about every single day taking care of your health so thank you all be well, be safe, and stay warm. Thank you. <laughs>